What is happening guys? Welcome back to Redbeard's Garage and in today's video we're going to take the 224 off of my Trailmaster mini bike. This is the same mini bike we raced at the GPS 180 race and we take to all of our meetups. It's my personal mini bike and I absolutely love the thing. It makes a ton of power and it's just uh, an amazing bike. But uh, since the GPS 180 race had actually happened before it, it started blowing a lot of smoke out the vent tube off the valve cover. And what's funny is it's not blowing smoke out the exhaust. So what we're going to do is I'm suspecting that it's maybe either a head gasket or rings. So we're going to freshen up that engine. We're going to do a new rod bearing from Go Power Sports. We're going to go ahead and put a new piston and rings in it because pistons aren't that much money and it, we might as well just freshen it all up and then do a new head gasket. We're going to dyno it before the rebuild and then after the rebuild. So uh, let's get it on the dyno real quick and see what kind of powers it makes. Pretty much halfway blown up. The engine, like I said, still feels super stout. Like it's one of my favorite engines I've built. Uh, it's just all around a great running bike and we've had absolutely no issues. The thing runs flawless everywhere. Uh, but it's time to freshen old girl up because we just redid our MB200 and bulletproof the whole frame, had it powder coated and you'll see that uh, probably next week, get all put back together and see what kind of um, you know unit that thing can be for future races. So uh, let's get on the dyno and then get to rebuilding it. So we have the 224 up on the bench. We're going to be installing a new Tillotson piston. Now this probably only needs rings, but uh, piston's not that much money. Go Power Sports has these. The links are in the video description. This is the flat top that we used in this 224 build because it does not come with a flat top piston stock. And for the rod, uh, we're going to go ahead and freshen up the rod bearings. This is a 6394 from Go Power Sports. This is for the clone. So this is not the rod and rod bearing you would use if you're just putting a billet rod in the 224 but since we went with a flat top piston originally we had to use a clone rod so you just need to pay attention to links and how i word them um, we're going to drain the oil out we're going to check the spark plug replace it if it needs replaced and also um, this engine has i don't know how many hours but a ton we raced it in texas taking it on tons of uh, mini bike trips it's got a lot of abuse and that's the benefit of a magnetic dipstick also links in the video description but that helps out a ton all that sediment so we're going to tear this thing apart and we're going to see what the the bore looks like what the rings we're also going to check the bore make sure it's not out around and also check the crank while we're doing the uh rod bearing so we don't have to pull the crankshaft out of this i don't think i think i can get to everything it'll save some work this ain't running awesome it's just blowing out of the vent so i have my valve cover uh, two lines going to the block to help equalize the pressure. And then I have one line exiting the uh, valve cover with a check valve. This only lets air out and not back into the engine. And that's what is blowing a ton of smoke. This is smoking like crazy, which is really weird. It's not smoking out the exhaust too much, but it's got a lot of blow by, which is caused by rings. So uh, let's get this thing tore apart and see what she looks like and then see what it makes on the dyno after the rebuild. The oil doesn't look horrible, but it was time for a change. I would overly change the oil, especially if you're doing a performance build. Maybe ever 10 hours or so would be uh, probably acceptable or less. If you're doing races, I would change it after every race. It's just a half quart, but it uh, doesn't look horrible, but it definitely smells like fuel.
So the top head bolts are a little wet with oil, which is real interesting. You can see both of the tops are wet with oil. The lower ones are clean. Never really seen that before. It could have, I don't know, a head gasket could be leaking. Really interesting. If I have some head studs, I'm gonna replace these with head studs while I got it off. So here's the, oh, forgot to take that. I always forget to take the heat shield off. It's underneath. That's what it looks like. Oh, we had a, that's what caused our compression problem. Right there, it's split, which is allowing that little breather uh, that allows oil and stuff to flow up to the valve train and that's what was causing it it's cracked right there you can see that head gasket was wore slap out so this engine with this problem just like this made 17 and a half horsepower so this is going to be really interesting to see what kind of numbers it makes with a fresh head gasket and uh, so it wasn't the rings at all it was this the entire time it was leaking compression past right here and that's why we was only getting smoke out of our vent tube and not our exhaust so i'm not going to touch the rod for now i'm going to just say uh, screw it and i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to keep my fresh parts from go power sports on the shelf for another build and we're just going to replace this head gasket this is pretty interesting a few moments later so what's interesting is the block seems to be cracked right here. If you can see that, the block like busted pieces of it off. I've never seen that happen before. So it, it like flaked part of the aluminum top layer off. So unfortunately, that's not going to be fixable. I mean, we could try to risk the biscuit and put a head gasket on it, but I don't think it's going to work out. Look at how worn that head gasket was from this. I would say this failed. I would say the block failed is what seems like it happened. But who knows? I don't know. Where's that piece of block at? Did it hit the piston? There's a little mark on the piston. But um, so basically, I'm pulling this first, first time. You can see right there, it just shattered it all the way through. And then there's a lot of soot build up where it was blowing and it's letting oil in here as well but we wasn't smoking really that bad hardly at all out of the exhaust but so i don't know what fell first the head gasket or the block i would say the block chipped like that you can see it though it's split that's a wall hanger and then just fractured the block never seen and this thing made 17 and a half horsepower like this which is really amazing that this thing you can see how much compression it was leaking so now i'm probably going to get on the horn with the local harbor freight i'm probably going to go run and get me a new block today and we're going to put all these parts with a new piston new rod bearing into the new block and have us a real getter only thing it won't be black that's the only downside but uh yeah so let's get us a new block because this is no bueno all right after looking at this more i'm pretty sure what is happening is the actual steel board that's pressed into aluminum is getting shoved out of the engine basically if if you can hear so it's basically pushing the steel bore out and that's what shattered the block right there so that's what happened the bore started to come out of the block don't know why it's probably just a faulty block we got this before it even hit shelf so this was kind of a brand new engine and we got one of the first ones that was pretty much in america so that would could be an issue with uh, quality control i'm not sure so we're going to go ahead and tear this block completely down and we're going to go down to harbor freight and get a brand new 224 block we're going to reuse our cam piston all of our valve train we're going to reuse this head because it should be fine we'll make sure and uh check it with a straight edge might even take it down to the machine shop and see if they can check it with a oh, geez, higher quality straight edge but that's what was happening it basically blew through right there they can check that area but it was just shoving the bore out of the block uh, it looks like my piston has a little bit of 
of some marks on it, it could have dropped this piece of aluminum down in here and just beat it to death. Oh, one thing we can see is how good our Cerakote held up. So it looks like the Cerakote is still on. Uh, it looks like it's flaking, but it's not. That's just the buildup on the exhaust valve. Uh, we will re-lap our valves before putting this head on. This was a built head, but uh, everything looks good. We're gonna try to polish this puppy out. I just want the machine shop to check right here on the head to make sure it wasn't damaged at all. I'll tell you what, one of the greatest things Go Power Sports ever came out with was these thicker side covers. We had ours powder coated red, and I'm telling you, they are the cat's meow. They're real nice. They're like three times thicker than your normal side cover they're like eighth inch thick they're crazy thick and just uh if you're ever wondering why we don't run one of our msd style coil, coil packs on the dyno that's because they're too dang good uh, they block all the interference out with the wires we use so you cannot get an rpm reading we have to use a stock wire because these let you know frequencies out of the wire so that means our coils are miles above a stock coil and basically because we're grounding it to the head to get your grounding right and we're using a higher quality wire that don't let interference happen so it's giving you even better spark look at our flywheel all gouged up from that time uh the fly the starter gave out the springs busted and it reached out while i was at like 5,000 rpms and ripped this cup apart bless her little itty bitty heart If you're messing with billet flywheels, definitely buy this tool. It's real nice. I don't know if you can see the gouges that's out of this thing. There's freaking shrapnel all over this thing. So these come with a billet fly or side cover. Uh, that's not one to come off. And what they do is they, sh oh gosh, they shove against the dowels and they force your side cover off. Cause these billet side covers aren't real nice. But this one ain't wanting to, come on baby, don't you break on me. It's working, it's working, it's working. So you just evenly do them and it pushes against the dowels and forces the side cover out. And I would say, uh, actually the O-ring doesn't look bad, but we're gonna replace it anyways. Both our bearings stayed on the crankshaft because the crankshaft is, oh gosh, a little crusty. Get that schmutz off. Schmutz is off. We gotta clean those, we gotta get our shims off the crankshaft. Seems like we use one thick, one thin shim on our crankshaft to get 10 thousandths in play. That's how much crank walk you have. Oh, let's spin this around. Get that out of the way. Our cam lobes look real nice. There's no, there's no pitting on them. I don't remember what cam this is. You'll know. You know, I'm gonna tell you. Our tappets or lifters look real good. And I don't even think these are stainless. I think these are stock lifters. Oh, Saving money at every corner. Grab the crankshaft and just give her a squeeze. And I, I break them loose evenly. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, rod bearing. Don't look too shabby. I mean, she was getting some wear on her. So this is the rod bearing. Still looks great though. There's no gouges missing or nothing. Push that piston out. Oh, 
Everything looks fine. I mean, she's got some wear on it, but no gouges. Everything feels smooth. Piston skirts are still got, I mean, they got some wear on them, of course, but they're getting so much grit all over the thing. It's a good piston though. We use, we'll reuse the rod. We will not reuse the piston. Don't look like anything was making contract. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, to me, they did clearance the block right here from factory. Did they? Or did my crank do that? I don't know, honestly. I couldn't tell you. I can't remember how this block was. It's been three moons ago since I did this thing. It's been a year. Okay, bless her heart. Hope to die, stick a needle in my freaking eye. This thing is too pooped to pop. All right, on further investigation of this 224 massacre, uh, it looks like what the problem was, was the board was splitting in half. It goes halfway around. You can see it stops up there at the top. It goes all the way around and the crack stops up there. So basically you can see it there in the light. So it was cracking the bore and pushing the bore out. That's insane. That's wild. So Harbor Freight's holding me a 224 down there. We're gonna go grab it and we may be putting it together non seracoded I might see if my guy can seracode it overnight. It's pretty quick to do so. So maybe he'll, you know, if I could break it down real fast, he could seracode it for me. And I could run it down tonight and get it back tomorrow. That is crazy though. That's wild. A few moments later. So what we're going to do, since we did not have our dyno when we built the 224, we're going to go ahead and dyno this engine bone stock. We're going to just run 93 octane in it because that's all it would call for. And then when we do the build on the engine, we're actually running 110 Renegade race fuel. They sent us out a few five gallon buckets of their race fuel. We've been using it on our higher compression builds. I highly recommend checking out Renegade. They'll ship right to your door. They have uh, E85, they have 110 race gas, they have all types of options, and I uh, highly recommend their fuel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run it on the dyno a few pulls and get it up to temperature. Probably run it for about 15, 20 minutes under a load to break in the rings really good. Then I'm gonna drain the break-in oil and run the Dominator racing oil in it. Now that we've broken the engine, we're going to drain that break-in oil, put the Dominator Racing oil in, and see what kind of numbers we can actually get out of a stock 224.
We had a few spots making contact on this new block, so we'll have to do some clearancing in the block and on the crankshaft before we continue on with the build. This must be a new version of this block because the old block casting was a lot worse shape than what this one is. This new engine looks miles better in quality. Looking at these two blocks, they're actually a little bit different. The old 224 had the lower dowel pin hole. This one only has the upper and it's super tiny. Uh, the most important are keeping you know, the two original ones and putting the solid dowels in. I'm not gonna worry about, of course I can't do nothing about this one down here. I could drill this one out, but I've never had a problem just running two. I try to run as much as possible, but in this case we're just gonna be running uh, running the two in the original spots. Just want to say real quick, you should never reuse a billet flywheel on a new engine. I'm doing it because I just want to see what happens. It's an experiment, but don't be like me. Do not use reuse a billet flywheel. Uh, it's best to keep the billet flywheel lapped to the engine you originally used it on. Um, we're just going to do an experiment. So don't do what I do. Do as I say. All right, so we got everything freshened up on the engine. The only thing I have to do is go get some more of the 3 8 clear vent tubes uh, so I can vent the block properly. So all we gotta do is throw this on the dyno. We're gonna get those hoses hooked up. We have our uh, temperature sensor. This goes in between the spark plug and this will give us a reading of our temperature of our head uh, for the dyno. And we normally run our dyno around 190 uh, degrees like once the engine gets around 190 degrees some engines take forever to get up there stock engines but these build engines you do a couple hard pulls with them you'll get the temperature up then we take our numbers so we're kind of at a good heat range um, so yeah let's go get some hose and get this thing running A few moments later. All right, so we got the dominator racing oil in. We're gonna get the engine back up to temperature and we're gonna do the real test. Uh, so far we've seen pretty decent gains and normally we see about a half horsepower more when we use the dominator racing oil, so we'll see. All right, so we have our cheat sheet and we're all done with this rebuild. So stock, that 224 made 10.11 foot-pounds of torque and 7.43 horsepower. And that's about what we would expect from what Harbor Freight claims. Um, so it is a better value. Of course, we knew that buying the 224 over the 212. You're getting about a horsepower more. Uh, so is that worth the extra money? I think it is because the potential in the future uh blown up the engine was making 14.15 foot pounds of torque and it was making 17.43 horsepower 
uh, which was very impressive. After seeing the amount of damage that the engine had, you got to think this engine was run uh, just like this in GPS 180 race, which is Go Power Sports off-road race. And uh, Lonnie unfortunately had a lot of chain issues, and we've since fixed that problem with our frame by finding out the bushings in the frame was the weak point. But this engine was, there was a few people at the race come up to me, uh, came up to me that was concerned like, hey, you're blowing a lot of smoke out of your, your uh, vent tube. And I was like, yeah, it just started right before the race. We basically arrived right before we went to Texas. It started blowing smoke out and it got worse and worse. Of course, it would have continued to got worse until we lost all compression, seeing the damage that we had. Um, so we raced the entire GPS 180 race with this damage done to the block. So it's very impressive that we made 14.15 foot pounds of torque and 17.43 horsepower. It's pretty impressive. I wasn't as happy with my rebuild numbers, uh, but it is what it is. The dyno doesn't lie, and this is what it is. We gained 0.85 foot-pounds of torque, so right under a one foot-pound of torque by the rebuild, and 1.32 horsepower, so almost one and a half horsepower. So we end up, this engine is setting at 15 foot-pounds of torque and 18.75 horsepower, and that's huge. That's 11.32 uh, horsepower over stock, so more than double the horsepower and uh, I'm pretty happy with those numbers and we gained about five foot pounds of torque from stock to this. Um, now this build wasn't specifically for horsepower or torque. This was just an all around awesome build for like a mini bike or if you had a yard cart or something, this would be the type of build you would want to go with in my opinion. Now if we was trying to make a drag bike where horsepower numbers is the most important, of course we'd want more lift out of our cam and we go more route, you know, bigger carb, bigger valves, make the engine perform better in the higher RPMs. Because even though we was stretching it to nine grand, it really wouldn't make in a ton of power. Uh, there's no real reason to push this engine that far. So let me know what you think about this video. I was uh, super pumped. Uh, to get this engine back going. We actually redid our MV200 100%. We've got it powder coated. We put those metal slugs um, that we replaced the rubber bushings. We put hind joints on the swing arm. We're waiting on Go Power Sports to send us some neck tube bearings. And then that chassis will be put back together and we'll finally have our mini bike bulletproof so we don't kick chains. That was our biggest problem in Texas. We When you get to this horsepower limit, you're gonna to have to switch out those bushings on that mini bike because it was literally flexing the whole engine cradle section and causing the chain to come out of alignment. And I mean, this is almost 19 horsepower, ain't no joke on one of these mini bikes. So uh, we did get one of Go Power Sports new MoFlow billet heads. We got the 18cc, they do offer a 14cc head as well. This is a fully CNC machined billet head. It is freaking sweet. I've been dying for Go Power Sports to come out with this and they finally did and I'm super pumped to be able to put it on this 224 and have it on my mini bike. That's the biggest reason I went with the 18cc. I still want it to be drivable and not too crazy uh, because I do ride this mini bike at all of our meetups and me and Lonnie can throw our mini bikes in the bed of the truck, just go hit some trails and I wanna keep it still you know, where it's just not an all out drag engine. I still want it to perform. So next video, we're gonna be installing that MoFlow head. I'm super pumped about it. It does come with a, a CNC, like a billet port matched intake runner and also a billet valve cover that's almost like diamond shaped. It's really sick set up. I uh, highly recommend if you have the means to pick one of these things up, we're gonna see what kind of gains we can get with that head over one of their, I think we got a stage three head from Go Power Sports on it. So it's been milled, uh, it has a little bit bigger valves and it's been ported on the 224 now. So I can't wait to put the uh, billet head on it. And last thing, I think the biggest gain we would find in this engine right now is getting it balanced, sending the piston rod and crank off and getting it all balanced out. This thing's vibrating so much when you get, you know, past 6,000 RPMs, it's vicious. Uh, so we're losing a lot of horsepower to vibrations. If we would get that down, I think we'd have uh, some good number gain. So I think I'm gonna get another 224 and kind of replicate this build with a MoFlow head on it. And I'm gonna send the rotating assembly off and get it balanced. And then we're gonna re -dyno it uh, with the same parts basically just with the balance rotating assembly and see that in the upcoming video. So I'm gonna get those parts in, I'm gonna get them sent off and balanced out and we'll do that video in the future. So a lot of dyno videos coming. Uh, I know there's a big rambling at the end of the video, but we finally got our four disc 
racing clutch to do big block engines. People's been dying for us to do big block. This was the last piece of the puzzle. It was on back order for over two months. So we finally got this thing and we'll be doing some big block uh, road to horsepower. So stay tuned guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you made it to the end of the video, you're a champ. We thank you for supporting us and uh, we love you guys. And thank you for allowing us to be able to do this career. Make sure to check out the links in the video's description to help us to continue to do these videos. Super fun. Thank you guys. We love you and God bless.